kind of doubt this is actually gonna show up very well. All right, I just bought the this Lee priming tool for hand primer and realized that the shell holder I have, which is also a Lee shell holder I have for a 500 mag, will not work. So what I'm gonna have to do is take the priming tool from my 4570 and just kind of rig it. This does not. This is not really the way you're supposed to do this, and therefore there's a risk when doing it. And I have had a primer go off on me by doing this, but uh, you got your little priming tool, you just set the primer in the center. It's not going to stay there, because I don't know why. And uh, you just... This, this heat looks trash, I'm going to take it back. What garbage. Right, I'm going to take this out. And hope I don't lose a primer anywhere. Because I don't want that floating around in the garage. I'll step on it one day and blow the foot off. <laughs> so I'm just going to open it up. Take a primer. Set it down in this little thing. All right, I got it sitting there. You take your case. I've already sized it and deprimed it. And then this is a little rod that came with the 4570 hand loader. And the idea is you let this sit down in the case, sit this on top of the primer, on top of the tool, and then you just smack it with a hammer. And the depriming tool is made so that it distributes your pressure evenly so that you don't set off the primer. But it's made for a 4570 case. not 500 mag so honestly the 4570 case room I think is a lot bigger but it works in a pinch the whole reason I bought that depriming tool so I wouldn't have to or the this lead priming tool so I wouldn't have to do this but 500 mag, it's a, um, 500 mag is a, a cool cartridge and all that, but you have to, you have to find like special things for everything because it's just so damn big. That's like, this little powder funnel I bought. Bought it and realized that it's only good for 22s up to 45. But I think I can rig it. I think I can rig it to work too. So that will also be okay. So uh, I'm going to keep working on these. Let's do one more. Maybe you'll get a video of me blowing one of these up. I did that one time doing this, doing it this way too. <clears throat> did it in the house. We're in the garage right now. I think what happened was I just got, I just got in too big a hurry and instead of getting it started, Instead of getting it started and then wailing away on it, I just barely had the primer in there and just started wailing on it with a hammer. For a lot of cases that worked just fine, but there's one. <laughs> it went off in my hands and it scared the shit out of me. But anyway, if you kind of start out by just tapping it just a little bit just to get it started, that works a lot better. I guess I just got in a hurry. So to start with tap and check it and it's started but it's not in there always so let's finish it off and it's good and flush so I'm going to pause for a minute 
Okay, and we're back. We're back. I got my little shell holder here. We're going to do one last one, and I'm almost done with it. With priming, anyway. We got 20 cases that I'm, that I'm doing. This is my least favorite. This is my least favorite part of reloading because it is a scotch dangerous. The rest of it's easy. This is my Lee loader, by the way. It goes in there like that. There's a little more to it. There's a little scooper. And so I've got uh, 20 cases, and they have now been deprimed. They've been sized. And reprimed. So now I need to take out this die and put in my expander die. And I'm using all Lee stuff because it's cheap, of course. Okay, the expander. All right, so what this does is. Um, First off, it gives you a nice place to put a funnel to put your powder in, but also when you raise the shell up, it'll put a bell on it. At the top, it'll bell it out so that uh, when you put a bullet in there, it's easier to sit. All right, so put that in there and go up. All right, now that has expanded it, and also I need to put my powder in there. So I got a funnel I just bought today. Ah, that fits in there nice. We're gonna be using a lot 2400, and this is a scoop that came with my dies for the 500 mag. And I've got a scale, and here's the Hornady reloading manual. And where's 500 mag? It's way in the back because it's so damn big. Here we go. Okay, for a 300 grain bullet, which is what we're going to be using, we're going to be loading up this Hornady FTX bullet, 300 grain. For that, a lot 2400, you're supposed to use 38.7 grains just as a beginning load. That should be about 1700 feet per second. 38.7. Now, I took what I did was I took this scoop that came with my dies. And I just did one scoop of this and put it on a scale that I have because I don't have a trickle. Uh, I want to say a trickle charger. I don't. Know, I know that's not what it is, but the thing that puts a powder in there for you. Um, powder measure. Powder measure. There you go. I don't have one of those. I just have the scoop. So I put this one scoop on my scale, and it came to 33. I have it written on there. 33.6 grains. So this is actually going to be a downloaded load instead of 38.7 grains we're going to be doing 33.6 so this is a pretty lightweight 500 mag load but it's perfect for deer that 300 grain ftx bullet i'm not the biggest fan of the ftx bullets but they do work oh i mean it's just every my only gripes with them is pretty much just nitpicky stuff <clears throat> the fact that they they tend to not hold together very well is my biggest gripe with them so but they do still get in there and blow a deer up, so. Okay, I've got one scoop of that. Okay, so that one is expanded. Let's see if you can see. You see the, come on. See the expansion there at the top? See that's kind of a bell? You might not can see it. Yeah, there you go. You can see the around the edge, the shadow. All right, so it's expanded. It also has powder in there and a primer. So we're just about halfway there, huh? So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna set that up here and hope it doesn't fall. And I'm gonna keep doing that for the rest of these. I'm gonna expand it. Load it. And there we go. 
I'll set it up here. I don't really save any money when I reload. Actually, a lot of people will be like, oh, you know, you gotta reload if you wanna shoot a lot. Well, from what I've seen, you don't save a whole lot because you're always gonna be buying more equipment. You're gonna be buying more powder, more primers. Like this right here, I'm just doing it this way. It would be a lot easier if I had me a nice powder charge or, or powder scale or something like that. To do this for me so that I could just go kunk, kunk, and then I got my charge in there instead of having to do all this by hand. You ever seen Death Wish 3? Uh, Bronson reloads in that and uh, I guess this is how he does it in that movie so I guess if it's good enough for Bronson it's good enough for me in that movie he's shooting a 475 wieldy magnum and uh, he's he, it's kind of funny it's like the only action movie I've ever seen where the guy like Mail orders a gun just for these get the, the bad guys and then reloads his own cases for them. And he's sitting there with Martin Balsam, who was in Psycho, by the way. He's sitting there with Martin Balsam, and Martin Balsam's like, You load your own cartridges, and Bronson is like, You know. Nothing is too good for our friends. <laughs> Always like that. That's kind of how I feel about these. Because I'm loading this up for deer, you know. I'm like, nothing is too good for our friends. In the woods, the little white-tailed deer. I think I just did a double charge. Because I was talking to you. Oh, yeah. Big time double charge. So, we're going to redo that. Cool thing about 500 mag is you saw how much powder came out of there. Your charges are so big, there's no way you could, wow, there's no way you could double charge it. Okay. Yeah, so, Deathless 3. probably shouldn't talk while I'm doing this. Like I said, I'm going to go ahead and blame you guys for that. At least I caught it. Okay. There we go. That's the way it's supposed to be. Yeah, powder charge thing would be a, a lot better. Keep hearing cars out there. Like the driveway area. I don't know what they're doing. Hey, me and Dad built this bench. Uh, I think it was this year. It's working real good. I bolted this little joker down real well. Well, I'll tell you what, nothing irritates me more in a reloading video than to see somebody's press jiggling around. Jiggling around in the whole video. because they didn't tighten it down. Let me go look out in the yard. There's someone parked in the street in front of my house. I don't know what they're doing.
But anyway, yeah, this thing is solid. I've got it bolted down real good. Big bolts going all the way through the wood. Big the fat washers. So, me and my buddies went to uh, Tell the Dragon last weekend on our motorcycles. And I'll tell you what, we had a good time. We really did. And uh, as far as trips go, especially motorcycle trips, it was one of the smoothest trips we've ever had or I've ever had. I mean, we went down there, we did exactly what we needed to do, and we came right back and didn't have a problem, didn't have a hiccup, didn't have a anything. Just did a, just had a real good time. We stayed at a cabin up there in Gatlinburg, and it was up on the mountain as an Airbnb. I don't know why they call them Airbnbs. But anyway, it was a pretty nice cabin, and we might have a video coming on it here in a little bit. But uh, Tell the Dragon was a lot of fun. We also did the Cherry Hall Skyway, which was also really fun, and that's where I got this shirt. You might can see on the back. It's a Cherhaw Scotty shirt. It's pretty special. Yes, this is a Harley Davidson shirt. <laughs> uh, believe it or not, I actually bought a Harley the other day. Couldn't believe I did it, but I did it. Uh, wasn't going to get a Harley. I was looking at a new gold wing because those are really cool and I like them a lot. But I was looking for something that would just do uh, a lot of miles, a lot of touring, because that seems to be all I ever do on a motorcycle anymore. You know, sometimes I take them to work, and, but it's very rare anymore that I actually just go out and play around on a motorcycle. Typically anymore, if I'm on a motorcycle, it's uh, a trip that I'm going on and doing a lot of miles. And so to me, it just made sense to get something that was more suited for that. Now the Bandit was good at it actually. The Bandit really was, for a sport bike, it really wasn't bad. And it was actually, uh, I, if I was gonna get a sport bike to tour on, and I don't mean a sport tour, I mean a real sport bike, I think the Bandit would be a good one for you because it's kind of a jack of all trades. It'd be a real good bike for you. But for me, like I said, it, it's just gotten to where I'm just 100% touring anymore on a bike. So, so I started looking at the Honda Goldwings. Test Road one, loved it. It was the DCT and uh, it was like a $28,000 bike and I had it marked down to 22. So. I was gonna get it. Took the bandit up there and it, to get it. And I had it in my head that I'm coming home with a gold wing. And when I got there, they had this really pretty 2015 Electric Light Ultra Limited and it was in this really pretty like pool table green color. And I got to looking at it and he pulled it out into the sunlight and I saw the paint like sparkling in the sun. And um, I just couldn't help it. I was like, how much is it? And they said like 15 and it only had like 9,800 miles on it. And I was like, I think it's sold. <laughs> I took it for a test ride and um, did pretty good and I wound up, wound up bringing it home. I never thought I would buy another Harley, but I did. 
and uh, it's got a lot, quite a few. Actually, it's got a lot of upgrades over my old one. It has, um, it's got the Daymakers on it, which is really nice. It's got uh, GPS in the dash. It's got Bluetooth. It's got voice commands, but I'm not messing with that. It's got uh, just updated gauges, updated side cases, like the latches on the side case are a lot better than what my old one had. The old, I had a, if you didn't see it, I had an 08 Ultra Classic. This Limited is a lot nicer. It's got the, it's got a hydraulic clutch. It's liquid cooled, kind of, it's liquid cooled to the heads. It's the twin cooled 103 which I believe is a high output version of the 103, which is cool. But it's just a neat little, or it's, just, it's got a lot of nice, neat creature comfort things. Uh, it seems to ride better than my old one did. It seems to shift better than my old one did. It just flat out runs better than my old one did. Just everything it does is better than my old one. And it's kind of funny because looking at it, it's the exact same bike, but you know, they updated the frames, I think in 09 and made a lot of small improvements while essentially keeping it the same bike, they added a lot of stuff. This was Project Rushmore. And uh, I, I, think it, I think it made a big difference. I mean, this bike just feels better. It just feels like a better bike in all regards. Also, uh, it's not wore out like my last one was. My last one had like, I think 80,000 miles on it. This one had 9,800 when I got it. I think it's like uh, 12.5 now, because we did that, because we did that trip on them. But you know, on the Bandit, I could do about 50, or I'm sorry, I could do about 60 to 70 miles, I don't like that charge. I could do about 60 to 70 miles and I'd kind of start to get antsy and I could push it a little more and go 90 or 100, maybe even a little more, but I wouldn't like it. This bike on this uh, trip we just took I was doing like 130, we were doing 130 miles between stops and I felt fine. Like the only reason we were stopping was because the other guys I was with had to stop and fill up. I could have kept going, I felt really comfortable on it. And uh, so the, the bike's doing really good. I'm really happy with it so far. And it was, I think it was 15,000 I think is what I said earlier. And so that made it, uh, what seven or eight thousand dollars cheaper than the gold wing I was looking at getting all right so now we're done with that and we're primed we're expanded we're sized now we're going to put the bullet in and I think this also crimps it this so you can see what I'm doing. My gosh. Okay. Well, we're going to keep this right here. Alright, so I'm going to take one of these that has been expanded. And this, I always kind of have to fiddle with it for the first one or two just to make sure I'm where I want to be. I want the see the little see the little rim right here, or the ridge. I want the brass to stop right there and I also want it to crimp right there. Now I believe this die will also crimp for you. Let's see what we got. Okay. That wasn't near enough, but that's fine. Okay, see what happened? Is it put it in, but not nearly deep enough. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this thing, turn it in a little bit. And I'm just gonna do that until it gets where I want it to be. And I'd rather go too little than too much because I don't want to sit this too deep.
repair them or I think. Okay. Now I think that's that's pretty good. That's got a nice crimp on it. It's right there in the ridge. I think that's a done bullet right there, or, cart or done cartridge right there. So we're gonna do another one. We're gonna check to make sure that it's doing the same thing. After that, we're gonna start rocking and rolling. Mm -hmm. Another one, see? It's the same. Come on. What is it doing? There it goes. See? Nice little. I might even know. Just a hair more. But here's where we start really rocking and rolling. Feeling good about it. Also, I can see that crimp on there when I'm looking at it. So it's seeding the bullet and it's crimping it for me. And uh, I don't go for any kind of a crazy crimp on these. I have no real reason why. You want to crimp on these because you don't want the bullets to come out because then it'll lock up your gun. But at the same time, you know, I don't know. This is reloading and the heavier crimp you put on there, the higher pressure you create. Now we're going with an under pressure load or a low powered load, but still, I don't want to, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to create any pressure spikes. So. And I haven't had any problems with the uh, bullets coming out or jumping crimp, so I think the way we've got it set up is just fine. So yeah, we had a good trip, and uh, we did uh, what 1,500 miles in one weekend, and the uh, yeah the electric glide did real good. It's a beautiful bike. I'm going to see if I can put in some pictures here. You know, people talk about people talk about reloading and dude, I don't know. I mean this box of bullets, I mean, yeah, it's fifty bullets, but it was also thirty eight or forty dollars for this box of bullets. I can get a box of twenty five hundred mag cartridges for oh about forty or fifty, so it's like yeah, I got a lot more bullets or I got twice the bullets for the same price. But I have to buy this powder and I have to buy these primers. I have to buy the tools to do all this and it takes time for me to come out here and do it. And you know, something like 500 mag, you actually can probably save a lot of money. And I think in the long run, I probably am saving a lot of money doing this because 500 mag is just hard to find. And when you, the problem with 500 mag is that you can find it actually. I mean, it's kind of hard to find, but you'll have to go to, uh, you'll have, you can't go to Walmart and get it. You can't even really go to uh, Academy and get it. You'll have to, although you might could. But for the most part, you're probably going to have to just go to a, a real gun store and look for some. And the problem with that is you're going to have to just buy what they have. And every... Every gun store I know that stocks 500 mag, they want to stock 400 grain hard cast or 500 grain soft point. 
you know, I like these lower grain. This is 300 grain. I like these because we're, we're hunting deer around here. But I think what the gun stores imagine is people want a 500 mag just for the fun of it and for the novelty of it. So that's why they, that's why they stock those just insane, dangerous game loads. <laughs> but there's really no call for that. I think most people here in the South that have a 500 mag, they're probably hunting with it and they probably want something more like this or a 275 grain from Double Tap. That's a really good cartridge for deer. But you know, the 500 mag is pretty cool. It's kind of like the 4570 in that you can load this up and you can load it down. There's actually two other cartridges based on this that are loaded down. There's the 500 JRH, which is, I think this, this is 1.6 inches uh, long, the brass is. And 500 JRH, I think is 1.4 inches. It's just a little shorter. And then the 500 Special from Corbon, 500 Smith Weston Special is even shorter. And it's even uh, less powerful with less kick and everything else. And you can shoot all three of them, the mag, the JRH, and the Special in a 500 mag revolver. Which is cool. But that gives you a, a lot of diversity in how you can load it and what you can do with the gun. But uh, really, it's, it's kind of like the 44 mag though. Uh, 44 special is cool and all that, but do you really need it when you can just download a 44 mag? That's kind of how this is. Uh, you know, like I said, this is a downloaded uh, powder load anyway. Uh, and there's a, but there's a guy on YouTube that has a cool video about that. I forget his name, but he did a video where he compared the ballistics of a just a 500 magnum case uh, with less powder in it compared to like a 500 special or 500 JRH load where he actually did cut the brass back. It's the same powder charge, but shorter brass. And he found that the same powder charge with the lower with the shorter brass actually had better uh, con uh consistency it had better standard deviations and it actually had a little bit better velocity and the reason was because there was less empty space in the brass uh so as soon as the brass was ignited it was instantly pushing something out and not you know just hitting the air so here's our last one and we'll have this batch of 20 done And uh, I'm new to reloading, so I don't have any kind of, um, I don't have any kind of uh, case trimmers. I don't even have calipers to measure overall cartridge length. Uh, but, you know, for what I'm doing with it, you can tell this, this is fine. We've got a nice uh, flat primer. Or pretty close to it that one's actually out a little more than some of the others but it's, it's good enough and then the you know you can tell by looking at the cantilever on the bullet this is good this is nice and seated and we've got a safe load we know it's a safe load so you know this will work this will work I, as you can tell my brass is dirty I don't bother with cleaning them this is just this is working this is for going out and working in the woods so there you go 20 of these things done now that's a, that, that's a lot heavier than it was when I started so 500 mag reloaded there you go y'all have a good one